He's talking this afternoon right here on Center Stage. I'm Banker Lay Thompson. Welcome. Rayford Jackson is headed to prison for five years for taking part in a federal bribery corruption scandal here in Detroit. But uh, is he going to work with the federal government to root out more corruption in Detroit? What about the allegations being made by his once upon a time mistress, Fanchon Stinger, former Fox 2 anchor woman, right here on Center Stage after this break? Welcome back. Uh, we have in our studios Rayford Jackson. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Uh, let's begin. Uh, the, the question that's in the community out there is that uh, you have decided to take the hit to go into the federal penitentiary for five years. Uh, now, the federal court, of course, indicated that if you work with the feds, that uh, you could, in fact, get a lesser time. Why are you willing to take the fall? Um, because I don't believe it's my job, or I don't believe it should be me that should go in to help the federal government to root out corruption. I'm not a law official or a law officer. Um, I think the Federal um, Bureau of Investigation with their um, extensive investigation techniques and technology, if there's corruption, I think it's um, on them to root out the corruption, not Rayford Jackson. I know you have a lot to say on what your once upon a time mistress, Function Stinger, is now saying in the media about you, but I want to get through uh, some of these uh, important issues. Uh, you're going to prison. People are asking, okay, you have family, right? Yes. And you have kids. Yes. Uh, when you take all of that into consideration, is it worth taking the hit for five years? Um, with you, when you weigh the options. <clears throat> I think the path I took, I'm proud of the path I took. I think it, when you talk about rooting out corruption, <clears throat> the part that I didn't like about what the FBI wanted me to do, they wanted me to go in undercover. They wanted me to wear a wire. They wanted me to go in <clears throat> and dangle monies or offer tempting city officials and, and people in general. I think that that's not the way to root out corruption. I think if there's corruption that exists um, and then people are corrupt, they have a history of corruption. So I think through investigative process, they can use that in order to find the guilty party. I don't believe in going in there to then entice someone or people to then do something, take something, who have an insatiable desire or need <coughs> or, you know, trying to make ends meet, to go in and offer their money. Now, now, the federal government has indicated that they're not done yet in terms of their whole wide net of investigation in City Hall. Are there powerful people that, uh, are there powerful people that you have worked with that you don't want to let off the hook? Well, no, I think that well, anybody that I have a relationship with, and anybody who I don't have a relationship, you never want to see anything bad happen to anyone. And I, I think too often what we do is we work to bring people down, whether through slack talk, gossip, defamation of character, you know, libel, slander, or we, use, we, we allow ourselves to be used in order to bring down people. I think if you want to root out corruption, start at the top, and it's not in the city of Detroit. Now, do you, so you feel that uh, it was your indictment fair? Is that you're saying that it's not fair that uh, they should have started at the top and it's not in Detroit? Absolutely. I think when you look at Senegro, if, and I think if you really look at corruption, Senegro, from what I've read, <clears throat> um, and what they've said, they've paid Mayor, ex-Mayor John Street of Philadelphia $90,000. Senegro has a, a reputation of spreading monies around. And so I think that if that's the way the business is done, not just in Detroit, but all over the country and basically all over the world, then what corruption are you trying to root out and by what means and method are you using? Don't get the small man. Uh, so let's, let, let's dig deeper here. Uh, so how did Rayford Jackson used to do business? Is it to wine and dine in terms of the situation that got you to this point? Absolutely. I think just in the normal course of business with any businessman, 
what do you do if you're doing government work or if you're trying to procure government contracts or even secure, you know, or respond to requests for proposals? What do you do? You go out, you donate to different campaigns, you put people or try to lobby, put people in office that you think are going to have the same kinds of interests and desires in terms of where you match them in terms of your business model with people who have the same types of idea. So yes, you donate to campaigns, you wine and dine, and you do those things just like a lobbyist would do. So, uh, and that is not influence peddling? I think, and I'm not a lawyer, and I don't really, it's not so well uh, breast on the law, right. but I think there's a fine line. Mm -hmm. To me, bribery and where you influence peddling is if you say, hey, I have a contract coming. I'm going to pay you, give you, do this if you vote for it. But I think that if you look at the merits of a deal, mm -hmm. and if the deal has merits, mm -hmm. if it passes all the qualifications, and then if you have people mm -hmm. that's in positions that you are presenting that to, I think, again, why punish someone who's made contributions, who's done things, you know, when I think you should so, look at the merits of the deal. So why did you take the play deal? I think with the surrounding circumstances, you know, again, oftentimes when the FBI comes in, it's really, you, you know, you're fighting the government. So what do you do? Do you take the route of Sam Riddle and say, no, I'm going to court? For me, that would have cost a couple of hundred thousands of dollars. But, you, but you've made millions, though, so you have the enough money to, to yes, fight the battle Yes, it's court. not so much of the money, but again, the government throws a bunch of charges at you. You're looking at a jury pool. So it's just like hedging yourself. Do you want to take that gamble of going down and you got four or five charges? You know, the FBI told me if I didn't take this deal that they were offering me, initially when they approached me about the wiretaps, <clears throat> they would charge me with RICO. They would charge me with money laundering, structuring, conspiracy, you know, bribery. You know, they throw a lot at you. So that's why most of the convictions in the federal system is based upon plea deals. So uh, have, you, uh, have, you, are you, have you regretted what you've done? Absolutely. You know, always. I mean, when you're faced with the consequences or ramifications for your action, you often look back. And the hindsight is 2020. And you look back and say, wow, maybe I should have followed my first mind. Maybe I should have done this. Yes. What absolutely. would you have done differently? What I... What I would have done differently, one of the things is just sit back. I shouldn't have been so out front. You know, I believed in the deal. I thought it was good for the community, not just southwest Detroit, but, <clears throat> but citywide Detroit. Let's hold a thought. When we come back, uh, Rayford Jackson on the record here, and we'll talk about Funchon Sting as well and the allegations she's making against Rayford Jackson.